Hey guys, welcome to Living Waters Online. It's so great to have you back this Sunday. Last Sunday we heard an absolutely incredible message on the heart from Pastor Sid, and I can't wait to hear what he has to bring us today. Make sure to share this, start a watch party, get your friends, uh, get your family to watch today. We have an amazing word to get out to you guys today. Absolutely awesome. I know we're in a transition time. Happy Labor Day weekend to everybody. Um, if you guys are on your last holiday weekend, you know, before you're transitioning, getting the kids back into school, whether it be online or in person, but I know that God is working in your lives. You know, I was thinking this week, I was like, God, you know, with everything that's happening and everything that we've been transitioning through, and we've been doing this together, obviously transitioning through this time and what's happening. And um, I was just like, wow, you know, won't it be amazing when this thing is completely gone? I mean, we're all in agreement for that, right? But as we're transitioning this week, just know that God is, is, is for you and he will give you wisdom in everything that you set yourself to do uh, and in the transition time. But saying all that, we're moving into fall. And I was just like, God, you know, there's so many things that have happened. And, and I'm just so thankful, really. I, I feel just grateful to God because God has solidified me. And I'm so happy about that. And I'm so uh, thankful and grateful to him for doing that, to solidify us through trials, to solidifying us, to be there, never leaving us and never forsaking us through all the things that we're going through, our families are going through, you know, if you have kids and, you know, what the kids are going through, but, you know, God is faithful. And I, I wanted to look up the word complete because I thought, you know, God, we are complete in you. And that is God's will for us, is to be complete in him no matter what is going on around us that we're solid and secure and stable. We don't let our emotions rule us, but we stay the course. And so I love this word complete because complete, we all know what it means to complete something. It means to finish it. And I just thought, you know, this is really powerful, the definition. And it says to finish, right? Uh, what we're making or doing. But I love this. It says to make something or someone whole or perfect. And see, that's who God is. He makes us whole and he makes us perfect in him. And I love it because God says, you know, I make all things new. But what he really means with that is he makes all things new in us. And that's what it's all about. And Pastor Sid talked about that last week about the heart. And when your heart is in the right place and when your heart is, you know, just saying, God, I just want you to complete me. You know, I don't want a person to complete me. I don't want a thing or things of this world to complete me because they can't. They just can't. And the only thing that can complete you in your life is God himself. And he makes all things new. And that's the salvation that he gives us. So as we go into worship today, that's what he means. Behold, I make all things new in you. Stay. 
raced you in the racks to cry out Come on, come on, everybody praise him now If I lie, I'm gonna praise you now Let everything within me praise you now There's a do you bring in heaven down The King of Kings is on the ground So take your time So hard to see it Took me so long to believe it But you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it We get what we don't deserve, yeah You take the broken things them to glory. You are my champion. Giants for when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place and defeated. The striving seas. This is my victory. Cause you are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seen. has given me when I open up my mouth every cold start breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me
Colossians 2 10 says this it says and you are complete in him complete in him and so as we come out of worship and stay in this atmosphere and I just love the atmosphere of God you know it's actually he's real he is here with us and God says we're two or more are gathered in his name he's in the midst of us and so we just want to acknowledge God today with our giving and so I want to thank you guys for continuing to be faithful to God you know in every circumstance and every new thing you know God asks us to be faithful in the tithes and offerings and so we want to be faithful to see the kingdom of God go forth in our city in our province in our nation and when we give we are actually saying God I just want to give back to you the substance you know that you've given me and so that is something that is really really important as a Christian is that we continue to give and continue to honor God in our tithing offerings we think of all the needs today in our city we think of the needs that we meet through the ministry here at Living Waters and we meet so many needs and the ministries that we have are so incredible and I'm just so thankful to God for the incredible ministries and the calling of God on this church to reach the generation to be able to bring hope and life to a generation of darkness to help youth to be able to give an amazing atmosphere for kids in the kids church I just love it I love the ministry of infusion and what those guys are doing is so awesome for our young people and I also love the ministry to the homeless because the homeless in our city the needs need to be met and so we thank you today God we thank you as we bring our tithe and our offering today father that we do it unto you God we bring right out of our substance today God because we want to see your kingdom go forth God we just bring everything that we have father when we give it to you and so father we want to have a right heart today as we bring our offering and we thank you father for every person today that is bringing their tithes into the storehouse today and so father I pray you bless every family that you bless everybody watching today Amen. if you've never given before and you'd like to give this is how you give Giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tithely, now it's as easy as sending a text. To get started, text GIVE to your church's giving number. You'll receive a reply linking you to the setup page. Securely enter your information, and you're all set. Now you're ready to give anywhere at any time. Just enter the amount, and you'll receive a confirmation text and an email with your receipt. If you've made a mistake, no problem. Just text REFUND in the reply. Text GIVING with Tithely the simplest way to give to your local church.
Well, praise God, here we are, you know, once again on this Sunday, and uh, you know, we're on a very historical site right now, actually. I'm facing the Supreme Court of Canada, and just to the left, it's the Parliament buildings, and uh, you know, we're, we're just here today recognizing, you know, in, in the midst of the Supreme Court where, you know, where justice, you know, is what is truly where, where cases come that are in dispute or not being able to handle at a lower level. It's the Supreme Court that decides what the true law and what true justice will be meted out in the cases that go before them. And so, you know, with God as our Supreme uh, Court, Amen, our Supreme Judge, we want Him always to decide the issues in our life, always Him there to settle the disputes and the confusion that we may go through. And I want to talk today about what it is to receive an anointing from God, a mantle, if you will, from God that uh, decides your destiny and your purpose, give, gives you a focus, gives you a vision, and what is supreme in your life, the Lord Jesus Christ is eminent, but what it is to walk in that, to know that you have behind you an almighty God that knows all, hears all, <laughs> sees all, and will direct your paths if you allow him to. We've been looking at what it is to walk in the blessed life of God, amen. And I know more and more of you are, are saying hallelujah to that. I want that. I want everything that God has for me. And there's a young man, one of the great passages of Scripture is found in 2 Kings, uh, where it's the story of Elijah, the aging prophet that God used so mightily to speak to Israel. And his protege, Elisha. Actually, God sent Elijah to seek out Elisha, that Elisha would not only learn from him, but would desire the mantle that was upon uh, uh, Elijah and how that mantle is achieved. And the story is very clear that when uh, Elisha ends, it's his final days, he's at the end of his ministry. Matter of fact, God has spoken to him in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verses 1 to 9. Now the various uh, things he has to do to, to finalize his ministry to a very broken and at that time a very troubled nation, a very troubled times, a very perilous times. And, uh, and so the, the destinies that he had to fulfill in his ministry, um, he said to Elisha, well, Elisha, you just wait here while I go on. I've got to go on to a, a certain places to fulfill my mandate. And Elisha was one that said, no, no, I'm here. I want what you have. I, wa I want to walk in the way, in the power. I know that in myself, I'm just not strong enough to handle what you're going to leave me uh, because this generation is wicked and perverse and uh, troubled and, and I'm in the threat of, you know, you know life-threatening situations. Uh, the, the prophets of each of these troubled nations are telling me, you know, uh, you better not come here, you know, or you, you, better, you better flee because don't you know your, your, your mentor Elijah, this is his last day, and uh, Elisha kept, you know, kept saying the same thing wherever it was, and Elijah said, okay, come, but there's going to be opposition like you've never seen before, and Elisha was determined. You know, the mantle that was on Elijah, the word mantle or portion, 
that was on Elijah is really, you know, refers back to a birthright. It's the birthright of those who know God. It's a birthright that, you know, it's a birthright Jesus had that, that could in, in fact become, you know, a, a, an anointing that we would receive in our lives. So it's not, you know, that Elisha was after uh, Elijah's anointing. He wanted the anointing on his life that would allow him to fulfill his mandate and his call and his destiny in the troubled times that he would be facing as a prophet. And so Elijah was saying, okay, you can come, uh, I'll, I'll show you, uh, you know, uh, but be careful, be careful that you only seek God and not me. I'm not the anointing that you need in your life. It's the anointing of God. It's the power of God. And Elisha said, please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Again, asking Elijah for that birthright. And Elijah knew, okay, you have got to go for it yourself. You've got to seek after God. You've got to ask God. You've got to know what your true calling is in life. And folks, that's a message for us today. Do you know as a Christian what your true calling is? Do you know what your destiny is, what your purpose is as you walk here on planet Earth, amen, and the ministry that God has given you? And so God is giving Alicia and, and for us today a very clear message with regards to, you know, the great things first that we will face in these perilous times, these, these end times that we're in. But God wants to do great things with each succeeding generation. He raises up a new generation, but it must seek the Lord. Amen. It must seek the Lord for its own experience, its own mantle, its own power of the Holy Spirit that we've been talking about. Amen. It's what it is to walk in the blessed life, knowing that you are right where God wants you to, and you will continue to pursue pursue even the more of God, amen, in your life. And it's awesome to read about, you know, God opening the Red Sea for Moses and parting the Jordan for Joshua, but it's another thing for us to ask God to perform wonders through us in this day, in this hour. We're not just to be followers, we're to be leaders. We're not to sit and hear the message of God, but to perform and to walk in the message of God for you that you do have a purpose and a destiny. It may not be opening the Red Sea, it may, it may not be a lot of things, but there's a clear message, there's a clear mandate for you, there's a mantle upon you for the people that you will encounter, the situations you will face in your life, that you can be the giant in those situations. You can be the overcomer, you can be the conqueror, you can do those things, all things that God has destined you to do. When you seek after Him, when you thirst after Him, uh, the Bible says, you know, Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, you know, Elijah is a type of Christ, actually, ascending to the Father. And just as Jesus promises us in John 14, 12, you're going to do greater works. In other words, greater magnitude of the things Jesus did. He did everything that could be done as an example for us. And he's saying that he's looking for generations to do greater multiplication of the things he did with an increased power, an increased mantle in our lives. And so that's what it is, to enlarge, constantly, constantly enlarging our faith through that communion with God, that closeness with God, the intimacy with God that brings us into the place that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can defeat the foe no matter who it is. I can come against Satan himself if, if God would release him to me. I know that I have that confidence that I, I may be shaken, but I will not be shattered. I may fall, but I will rise. Nothing will stop me from fulfilling my destiny. That's what it is to walk in the blessed life. That's what it is to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is to succeed, if you will, in your destiny and purpose. But you must go for it. You must seek after it. Uh, don't let other people just lead you in what you, they think you should be doing for God. Seek Him for yourself. Amen. You're going to need an anointing, a power, and authority to reach this generation that only I can give you, says God. <laughs> and my spirit is going to endue you with all the power you need. And I think it's time to shout hallelujah for that. Amen. If you're feeling that coming on, if you're recognizing, hey, you know, I'm just sitting around as a follower. 
I'm just going from Sunday to Sunday, you know. I, I don't seem to be having any, you know, any desire to, to reach or, or to help anybody, you know. But I'm recognizing I was, I've been called. I've been called to reach those that God has placed before me. And so, folks, if you're ready for that, then you, you can ask for that, that double portion, amen, that anointing that will launch you into your purpose and your destiny and you will feel strong and you will walk in the blessed life and you know that every day is a good day regardless of what happens in your life you're feeling the strength and the power of god through his anointing and you're feeling like an alicia you're feeling like bring it on you know i can handle whatever it is that god because he won't give me any more than I can handle, and that's him talking to you today, amen? I believe Bethel was where one of the final stops in Elijah's life, you know, represents a kind of an evil society. It was very evil back then, and similar to our own nation has become in, 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 in these end times. In many ways, we, we live among scoffers, we live amongst mockers, uh, we, we live upon sensual and amongst sensual people seeking, given over to lust and idolatry and abortion, adultery, divorce, and occult practice. And this present generation is worse, <laughs> folks, than any that Elijah had to face. And so if we're going to be the Elishas, if we're going to be the ones that go for that anointing, we're going to need it because we are in a time that really needs a church that will rise up, a generation that will rise up and be strong, a generation that will, mar will walk and march with a victorious attitude, knowing that when God is with you, who can be against you? Amen. I thank God for every person who takes a stand for Christ. Amen. Because in these wicked times, but this evil hour that we live in demands that God's people thirst for that double portion of God's power and authority to be able to reach this lost generation. And folks, it's going to require a measure of anointing such as we have never seen in all of history. It demands that a holy remnant, we the holy remnant, rise up like Elisha and cry out, more Lord, more fire, more power. We need, Father, more of you. I believe Elijah wanted to teach his young successor that the miracle crossing of the past from Moses to Joshua were ancient history, that he was going to be launched into future endeavors. Amen? Not looking at the past and what the past did, but looking at the present and looking forward as to what he will be called to do. I believe he wanted to challenge Elisha as if to say Elisha when you start your ministry and you preach that God is a God of miracles Elisha you have to testify of what he has done for you personally see folks we can't go out you know with purpose and destiny if we don't have one <laughs> uh, maybe we can preach it to others but if we can't if we're not living it it's going to drop it's going to be shallow it's, it's not going to produce fruit You've got to, you've got to know that you are going to be an example to others. And that Christ, in Christ alone, and you're speaking out of personal testimony, you're pe speaking out of personal triumph over trials that you weren't sure you could e ever get through, but through the anointing of God and calling out to God for that, that double portion, amen, of His anointing that, that you've made it through. And you've got a testimony, amen. When you see Elijah, he didn't have the personal ability, amen, to empower Elisha. He showed him that the, the power, the anointing, the double portion is seeking after God, amen? And that's how Elisha received that double portion, going after God. And this double portion was something Elisha would have to pursue for himself, and that's, that's what I'm talking about. This is what the God's Word is saying to us. We've got to go for it because God is saying, I, I, it's there for you. It's there for you through the Holy Spirit. And you can walk in that power, and you will see your destiny and your pur purpose fulfilled, not only in your personal life, but in the church you attend, that that gifting that you have will be part of the overall gifting of the church where every person is valuable, every person has a part, every person has a destiny in achieving the goal. And the goal is seeing the lost saved, amen. The goal is seeing justice prevail. The, the goal is that we will be examples of what it is that, that believes in justice, that justice can prevail and triumph 
over evil and injustice, amen, in this society. And so at, at the moment he saw a mentor taken away in the chariot, because Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind in a chariot, amen, it's quite a story, man. You need to really study Second Kings and the life of Elijah and Elisha and really see, you know, the overwhelming, you know, power and purpose of God, amen. We must not allow ourselves to be satisfied, folks, with the status quo, amen, or to keep trying to recreate a past revival. We must be the revival. We must be the ones that rise up and others will be drawn and we rise up proclaiming Christ, our Lord and our Savior in our lives, that He is the supreme, the supreme ruler over our lives. And people will come. People are thirsting today for truth and purpose and destiny and reality. What is really real? The real things are found in Christ, in Christ alone. And so, are you ready? Are you ready to be one of those Elishas that are ready to rise up strong under the anointing and the mandate of God? If you are, stay tuned. I'll be right back. You might be tuned in and saying, well, Pastor Sid, I don't know about that. I don't know if I could be like Alicia. Well, if that's you, that's just, you know, you're still apprehensive. You're still a little nervous. You're still really not trusting. You're, you still don't believe in what God can do through you. And, but what you're hearing is the very Word of God. And the Word of God is for every one of His children. It's for you, no matter what you're facing. And you might be saying, wow, you know, there, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so drained, I'm, I'm so tossed and turned. And God would say to you, no, no, first of all, focus on me and you'll find the peace. Desire the destiny, desire the purpose, desire to walk in that life that's filled with power, 
which brings the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. And so I'm saying to you, you know, if you're born again, you know, th this is available to every one of you to rise up, to seek after God, to ask him for that double portion so that you can walk pleasing to him. You see, it's all about pleasing God. It's all about lifting up Jesus. And then all men will be drawn as we walk, you know, exalting the Lord in our lives and giving him all the praise and all the glory, amen. But taking the credit that we've done what God is calling us to do, that we're stepped into our destiny, destiny and therefore, you know, we, we, we give God the glory, but God is saying, you know, you did it. Yes, I provided the way for you and I'm there with you and I will be in every situation you face. But when you take the step, you're doing it through the power that, that has come from the Holy Spirit that I give unto you as that anointing which allow you to see the purpose, see the destiny. So it's a matter of getting up and rising up and experiencing that conquering spirit, that overcoming spirit, that where you become more than a conqueror, an overcomer, amen, through your faith and through your trust in God. And if you're watching and you're, you know, you've not been born again, but you know, you're, you're hearing a truth, you're hearing a message that maybe you haven't heard before when it comes to maybe your personal uh, church experience or God experience, whatever that might be, but the true God, is speaking to you today and if you want this walk which doesn't you know, exalt you it, it doesn't you know give you a lust for power but humbles you by the power that you walk in that creates a, a, a good in you and through you and proceeds out of you that others will know that you're different they will know man this guy he walks the talk his God is like no other God that I've tried. If you've tried many gods in many ways, to God there's only one way and it's through the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, Father God says that. There's only way, one way to me and it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if that's you today and you desire that walk with God, then Jesus is the way. Jesus is the one that went to the cross for your sin, that you could rise up out of that sin and walk in a life that brings good and, and brings health and, and brings power, not only to your life, but to people around you. You become an encourager, an exhorter, an example of what it is to, to value life, to respect authority, to, to really, really have the supreme power of God working through your life. Because he's got the book, folks, which is the answer to every troubled situation, every experience that the courts can't handle. He's got the truth. And when you go to Him, you don't have to go through any other person other than the Holy Spirit. But Christ, if you ask Christ to forgive you of thinking your way is better, that you don't need God, that there is no God, maybe you've mocked God, but just ask Jesus to forgive you for those things because you didn't know. But now you're beginning to, to want and thirst and hunger for more. And ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. And he will save you when you ask. Ask him to save you and forgive you of your sin. And you will enter into a relationship with Almighty God that you never thought was possible. And so praise God. I just thank the Lord for each and every one of you that are tuning in. And I know the word of God is really challenging. I know, you know, this is not about a feel good time. Really often it's about a challenging time. And that's what I love about the word of God. I love a challenge folks. And the longer I've lived with the relationship with God, I've just said, bring it on God. I want more, I want more, and I want more. And so that can be you today. And if you're now a child of God, wow, keep tuning in. Start making a contact, connect with some of the people, uh, you know, that are watching through, you know, Facebook, etc., and and just stay connected. God bless you. God really loves you. So do we. We'll see you next Sunday. Wow, totally amazing message. Wow, I love it. The fire of God. We need the fire of God. We need the Holy Spirit right now in this time, especially. So I just encourage you guys this week, as you go into your week, really get that time alone with God, really spend it in his word, worshiping him. I mean, God is alive. His spirit is real. And we really need to be revived in our spirits right now. 
And that's what keeps us strong and that's what keeps us alert, you know, to what God wants to do in our lives, in your life this week. God is going to use you powerfully to touch people's lives. He wants to use you to impact change in our city and in our nation. So just remember that, that God has a destiny and purpose for you and it starts on the inside. So remember, follow us online, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, on YouTube. And as you go into this week, remember this, God has completed you. He is the one that completes you. And that is absolute. Have a great week, everybody. Can't wait to see you next Sunday.